Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for August 29th, 2018. Tropics starting to get a little bit more interesting in the Atlantic Basin, but nothing that looks like it will impact any land areas of any significance anytime soon. The first area, I'll mouse over it here off the, well, approaching the west coast of Africa. It's not quite off just yet, but looking at the five-day outlook graphic, it looks like it will be, and then more than likely this will be taking a track somewhere out into the open Atlantic here as ridging is pretty strong here, pretty strong over here, but a weakness lies in between with a trough, generally speaking, and so the odds of this coming across and doing anything like we saw last year at this time looks to be close to zero at this point. And I know you might be thinking, well, how can you know that this far out? Well, I don't know it, but the pattern appears that way. We will not ignore this feature, of course. We'll be talking about it every day. But my feeling is that this will come out and then turn out into the open Atlantic at some point, maybe a little bit farther to the west. But the general idea is that it ends up somewhere in here before all is said and done. Water temperatures throughout all of this region are very warm, so this will likely rack up. Lots of ACE points, for those of you that keep up with that, the accumulated cyclone energy index or the amount of energy these systems expend, and that's a measure of how intense a particular season is. Kind of like keeping track of the scores of teams or even individual players on those teams, you know, basketball players, football players who score touchdowns, things like that. Tropical cyclones also score points based on the wind energy that they expend. Notice that there is no outlook for anything down here or in this direction over the next few days. There's been a lot of talk and interest about a potential system maybe developing there. And we'll take a look at that now. Here it is, some cloud cover, uh, definitely some strong upper level winds cutting across. Uh, there is a tropical wave located in this vicinity. So the seedling is there but there's not much associated with it, at least in trying to get it to develop. Off the coast of Africa, here comes the large tropical wave and the inflow, the westerly winds, as the system is going to encounter really decent convergence where the air is going to pile up and allow this system to curl up and do its thing off the coast of Africa. That being said, folks here in the formerly known as the Cape Verde Islands, the Cabo Verde Islands, you will have some showers and thunderstorms and gusty winds as this disturbance passes through that region over the next few days. You notice, too, that there's quite a bit of convective activity over the Gulf of Mexico, but that's probably more in line with a surface trough through here or something of that nature. Nothing organized, and I don't see anything happening over the next several days. Looking at the vorticity signature, this gives me an idea of the structure of our various features. And anything that's linear like this, where it's stretched out over a large area, like you see out here over the Atlantic, etc., cetera, um, that's not concentrated vorticity. Uh, here is, I called this incorrectly, Miriam yesterday. This is Norman, southwest of the Baja. And you can see that's on its way to becoming a hurricane. Very round in its appearance, very concentrated energy. And so that's what I'm looking to see. I want to see if we have anything like that happening in the Atlantic. And we do have a little bit of energy trying to bundle right here in the Northeast Caribbean Sea and associated, in, uh, whew, slow down, Sudduth, in association with that tropical wave. And then just large amounts of energy trying to come off Africa. And eventually that will bundle and we will have something to develop. So, you know, this system definitely warrants our attention as it moves generally off in this direction. I'm just not sure what's going to happen with it. The global forecast system, as I will show you, doesn't do much with it. And now even the European is less less enthused, the ECMWF model. When I say the European, that's what I mean. And we'll examine that towards the end here. Upper level winds, first of all, let's change this over to blue so I can outline the coastline. Uh, here's the northeast of the United States. There's Long Island through the Virginia Delmarva region, down through Florida, around the Gulf Coast, and then the Yucatan, Central America, Costa Rica, Panama, and the north coast of South America. This is where our friends in the Lesser Antilles are. There's Puerto Rico, 
and then you know Cuba as an example here. So I think you got your bearings, and you can also see lots and lots of red out here on the northern fringes of the deep tropical Atlantic, little less sheer back towards the east near Africa. But what we generally have is this tropical upper tropospheric trough kind of carved out sideways here. And so this is all cyclonic flow through here, air that is converging. It's also very strong in the mid to upper levels. And anything that's trying to come through in the opposite direction gets torn apart. And that's where the tropical wave is right here. And so it's not in a good environment, upper level winds wise. All right, so we'll watch and see how this evolves over time. Indications are that the Atlantic will continue to progress into September into a more favorable pattern. On the opposite end, I just want to show you what this looks like in the Pacific. Here's the west coast of the US. There's the Baja Peninsula and Mexico. And here is Norman with outflow over the top of it, green. See that? That's an anticyclonic, you know, where the air just gets thrown out clockwise in the upper levels. Uh, generally the same is said for Miriam over here, but upper level winds quite strong lie just to the north. So, you know, until you see something like this parked over a system in the Atlantic over a fairly small area, you're not going to have much chance for development. And I do think that's going to change the Guidance is indicating it. We've been talking about this for a couple of weeks, that the models do pick this up pretty well. Large scale changes in the overall upper environment so that we change this pattern of convergence and sinking air to one that's more of divergence aloft or the air is spreading out. Water temperatures, of course, very warm. All that mustard color, I guess you could call it, uh, 30 degrees Celsius and then higher resolution uh, temperature charts would show 31 Celsius in some places. Bottom line is the Gulf of Mexico, of course. Very, very warm, and even the West Atlantic here. Although, uh, you remember that I was remarking how far north this line, the 26 Celsius line, had extended just a couple of weeks ago, and it was all the way up here close to Long Island. Well, it's definitely retreated, and uh, that's good. I mean, obviously, you, know, you can still get a hurricane to come up the East Coast, but having the warmer water right up next to the big megalopolis area is always a little concerning. You'd rather it not do that uh, and keep it farther south so that something, if it were to come up the east coast, would weaken quicker. Uh, but you folks off the Carolinas, you know, pretty nice, 27, almost 28 Celsius, depending on where you are. And with the big high pressure sitting out uh, up here, generally speaking, you know, you're going to have a pretty good easterly flow overall coming around like this. And it should push those warmer waters back towards the coast. And it's going to be a nice Labor Day weekend coming up, I do believe. So let me show you the evolution of the GFS over the next seven days. This is the 500 millibar level. So up at about 18,000 feet or so. And we're looking for these mountains of air. That's one thing. These contour lines of the atmosphere, so to speak. And then your ridges, and then your troughs, and your ridges. You see that, the pattern. And anything underneath that starts to develop these areas of vorticity. Nothing on the initial map, as you can clearly see. But if I put this into motion, watch what happens. Off the coast of Africa, here comes our system. It consolidates. And there's just not much ridging up here. You don't see that 594 height line. You know, I drew one in. It's not there. It doesn't There's one over there on the western side of the basin, but there's not one in the eastern Atlantic. It is in the beginning, and then it dissipates, meaning that there's not enough ridging out here, according to the model, to keep what this would be presumably Florence. I mean, that's a pretty good signature in the model. It's going to let it allow. It's going to allow it to gain latitude and then eventually go around what little ridging there is in the east Atlantic and not get caught underneath a broader ridge and we have the disaster like we did last year with Irma, Jose, Maria. All right, remember that trio? Of course you do. And this is a different pattern. Now this could change a week from now. I'm not one to, you know, I've done this long enough to know that. You never say, oh, it's a done deal. It's not a done deal until it is well on its way out into the Atlantic. And then you got to see, you know, depending on where it turns, does it hit Newfoundland? 
Uh, some of these can turn over towards the British Isles, etc. You know that. But, you know, I will point out when I see good news, and for you folks here in the islands, and that includes Barbados, Trinidad, Tobago, nope, this is not a low-riding system like Matthew or Ivan, to name a couple, and I don't think this will be an issue, but we will certainly monitor it just to be safe. All right, looking at the European, the ECMWF from the 12Z run, this is the energy that it tries to develop and has developed over in this vicinity the last few runs. Uh, by the way, these graphics here, this and the satellite imagery, all from tropical tidbits, I will never, ever stop commending that young man for the work that he has done. Awesome. Um, credit where credit is definitely due. So this is the initial map, 24 hours out, not much down there. 48, 72, maybe a little bit of a reflection in here. And then by 96 hours, day four, a little bit more, but not as robust as we were seeing yesterday and last night on the 0Z run. And then finally there at 120 hours and then at 144. So six days out, much less of a threat, at least to the peninsula. And you know, does this mean that we, oh, well, nothing's going to happen. No, that's not what this means. It just means this particular run of the Euro is not as robust with development. Uh, but there is energy down there, and the pattern is changing. There will be ridging up here, so the odds are that this would continue more west with time. And we need to watch it, okay? We don't just ignore these systems. Not at this time of year. Some very powerful, infamous hurricanes have developed close to and in the vicinity of the Bahamas or the Florida Straits. And you saw the results of that. No two situations are ever alike, but when you see similar setups, you have to at least take a little extra notice. And, you know, a couple of points that are sort of favorable for this to perhaps develop, certainly the time of year, the um, pattern change that we're going into to more favorable, and so forth. So, you know, I'm not too worried about it yet, but we will certainly be watching it closely over the coming days. All right, so that's all I know. That's all I've got. You know, the East Pacific, yep, busy. Miriam and Norm, uh, Norman, <laughs> something. Um, Miriam, not much of an issue. Norman, we'll watch and see. If it's going to threaten Hawaii, that would be several days from now. Uh, I do not want to cause any unnecessary anxiety because there's no indication that it will be a direct threat right now. So why worry about it? All right, well, that's it. I am done for today. Have a good rest of your Wednesday. As always, thank you for tuning in. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll have more for you tomorrow.